Hello, second and third grade students. We are going to start today a series of videos so that we can learn all of our math facts and how to do them and how to get them done so we have some experience with them by the end of the school year. Now, one thing you're going to need to pay attention to it through this series of videos, because there's going to be 12 of them over the next 12 school days or maybe a little more if we decide to not post one one day. But second graders, you have a choice. Third graders, you don't. Second graders, your choice is this. There is going to be a part in each video where I say, second graders, you can log off or stop the video, stop watching if you wish. Because at that point, I am going to go from talking about multiplication to division, which is going to be your main goal, third graders, because we've done so much multiplication already this year. Our main focus is going to be division. But, so third graders, you need to watch the whole thing because you're going to have assignments that focus more on division. Second graders, yours is going to focus on multiplication. But if you would like to learn more about division as well, you are more than welcome to keep watching the videos. Okay? So today we are going to start with our lowest number. We're going to start with our lowest number and then we're just going to get bigger as we go and this one's going to be a short video because it's going to be so easy you're going to want to cry but don't cry we are going to start with the number zero which looks more like an a now zero when we learned rhymes and times early in the year with the third grade we had a rhyme that said zero is always the hero and what that means why they tried to Form the rhyme that way is because any multiplication fact with a zero in it that stands by itself now not 10 with a zero in it but just zero the answer is always 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 going to be zero so 10 times zero is zero zero times nine zero a million times zero zero super easy right now, it's also important to know exactly why all those problems are equal to zero. If we take those pictures that we've been drawing that you've watched over the last few days and we apply it to a math fact with a zero, I'll do six times zero. And I'll do it just the way that I've done all of my problems so far. Six times zero. So I read my problems top down. So I take my six. That means I need to draw six circles. Three, four, five, six. And I need to put zero dots in each. I'm done. How many dots do I have? I got none. So I think of that like there's six bags of chips in the cupboard, but there are no chips in any of the bag. How many chips do you have? There's no chips, right? Now, if we think about that in reverse, flip that problem around, and we think of it now as zero times six, just the opposite. Well, I read it top down. I drew zero bags. Done with that. I'll put six chips in every bag. Okay, so now there's chips in the bag, but there's no bags. So I'm still left with zero. So any problem that has a zero in it, doesn't matter how big the other number is or how small, when there's a zero, the answer is zero. All right? So even though that seems really easy, I'm going to have you practice that today with your assignment just so that you know what it looks like when you see it, okay? Second grade, this is the point now that if you would like to stop the video, you can stop and go to your work. Third graders, we are going to start. So I'll give you just a second. If Second graders, if you want to move on. All right. Now as we switch to division, third graders, one thing that we are going to be looking at, we've talked about this year, that multiplication and division work together, just like addition and subtraction. We've talked about part, part, holes, and math mountains. When we do a problem 
like, I'm not going to use zero for this example just yet, just so that it makes more sense. Two times three. Hopefully in your head you're thinking two times three is six. When we do two times three, our two and our three go at the bottom of our math mountain. They're both parts. Part, part, and our whole would be six for our answer. Now, this is also a division problem. But in a division problem, what they do instead of giving us a part, part, is they give us a whole and a part. Just like when we subtract, we have that whole and we subtract a part. We take a whole and we divide a part. So if we had this problem, I just need to get one of my parts right here. So now I'm looking at a problem that actually is saying 6 divided by 2. So 6 divided by 2 equals... So that means I can do this a couple of different ways. I can make six circles and read it the same way I do my multiplication problem. And I can put, actually, that's not the best way to explain it. The best way to explain it, so that this is easiest for you guys, is to think of it like this. Is that when we've made our multiplication drawings, I've always started at the top and made that many circles and then put the amount in each, is I'm going to now look at my part and think of that as that's how many groups there are. So there's two groups. That means two circles. Smaller number, part, two groups. And then I'm going to divide six in each. Now here's where we have to think. Divide six into each. That doesn't mean put six in each. It means take six. So if I had six pieces of candy or six anything, I have to give one to each until I've given out all six. I've given out all six. How many are in each? Three. Now that'll get easier as we do each number every day. That's why we're going to do each number every day. But here's the thing. We're going to go back now and we're going to focus on our zeros. We'll tackle those bigger ones and I'll have a better explanation. I know that was a little choppy when we get to those big numbers. But I'm going to go back to our zero. So if I had a 10 at the top of my math mountain, and a zero on one side. What that would mean is I would need to draw from what I just told you zero groups and put 10 in each. Well, I drew zero groups and I have 10 in all zero groups that I drew. So what's my answer? 10 divided by zero? It's gotta be zero. Zero times zero is 10? And eh, no, not really. But we know anything divided by zero, just like multiplying by zero, is going to be zero. So know that for how it works. Tricky explaining with zeros and division, so your assignment today is more or less just to remember anything times zero, anything divided by zero is gonna be zero. Because whenever we either have zero groups or zero in each group, it's not going to work out. Now this will make more sense and the drawings will help a lot more as we get into those bigger numbers, okay? So keep that in mind. Get through your assignment today. You, you'll fly through it just like we did with rhymes and times with anything with those zeros. Remember, it's always the hero, even in division. And we'll pick this back up when we get into our bigger, num bigger numbers moving for the next couple days. All right, have a good day. Good luck on your work.